Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, video where we will discuss job costing. Okay. So what's job costing or job order costing? So job order costing is an accounting system or it's a system or methodology which we use to, uh, number one, we use it to, uh, essentially we use it to determine the cost of a job, okay, a job or an activity, okay. We'll discuss more about this uh, in the succeeding slides, but job order costing systems are used when, number one, many different products are produced each period, okay. So, for example, uh, for example, your business is furniture business, you no? Know? So, every order of furniture that you have is a different product. No, hindi naman yan, it's not a production line, you know, such as corned beef or canned goods, no? uh, your product are more or less differentiated every time that you produce something. One furniture is not the same as another. Okay, so essentially, under a job order costing system, we want to get the cost of each job or each active or each product that you are uh, producing and these products are not standardized and there could, there, there could be some level of changes or some level of differences between these products. Uh, number two, products are manufactured to order, as I mentioned, similar to furniture. I mean, uh, each order is different and therefore there are differing levels of materials, labor, and overhead for each kind of order or job. Okay? The unique nature of each order requires tracing or allocation of cost to each job. So essentially, job ordering costing deals with the tracing and allocation of these costs to these different jobs within a year. You know, so that we can know the proper cost of one product. And by knowing the cost of that product, we're able to then price them appropriately. Okay? One order is considered a job that needs to be fulfilled. No, and that job has its own costing parameters. So what are some examples that would use job order costing? No? Example are aircrafts, Boeing or uh, the European, uh, the one which uh, uh, manufactures Airbus. They are job order because every time uh, that an air, airline company orders a Boeing aircraft, it comes with a design. Right? I mean, it depends on the company that's ordering whether it would be a basic airplane, airplane just like Cebu Pacific, for example, no? or maraming, mas maraming business class rather than the normal ones. And so therefore, there are some level of customization which makes the cost of each order different from one another. Okay? So example is Bechtel International, which is a construction company. So for each construction that they do, iba iba yung nature, no? iba ang design. And because the design is different, the level of execution is also different. No? So therefore, the costs will also be different for each of those large-scale construction. Another is Walt Disney Studios. Of course, obviously, each movie has its own cast, which has a different cost, uses differing levels of technology. Right? An animated movie will have a different cost than in historical movie, for example. So movie production, each of those products has a different uh, has a different cost structure. And therefore, our objective is to appropriately determine the cost of each one. And we usually do a job order costing system to determine it. Okay. Now let's look at uh, job order costing in detail. Okay. So uh, in this case, we consider one job or one order as one cost object. And being one cost object, our objective is therefore to determine the direct costs and allocated costs to this job. So for example, you have three jobs. Let's assume that those three jobs are related to furniture. Okay? So, so pa yung una, yung pangalawa, bed, yung pangatlo, cabinets. Okay, those are the three jobs. Okay, three jobs would obviously require materials, labor, and manufacturing overhead. 
vacuum, uh, direct causes as direct materials and direct labor are usually easily traceable to a job, right? Why? Because uh, usually, madaling i-record ilang taho yung kailangan for the sipa. Ilang yards of of of, of cloths or of, of uh, textile para sa covering niya. How much is the foam that you use? Those are easily traceable, traceable, easily determinable. So those direct materials as it is used is allocated or traced to certain jobs. So as job one uses uh, wood, then it will record yan. Ganito karaming wood yung ginamit, ganito ang cost noon. Right? For job two, as another, um, as another material is, is uh, being used from the warehouse, it will record only yun. Okay? The same is true with direct labor. It was a laborer one, okay? He worked on job one for three hours. That can be recorded, and therefore that is direct labor and directly traceable costs. Now, for manufacturing overhead, on the other hand, as you know, this is considered indirect costs, not easily determinable, and not easily, uh, not easily traceable to each job. For example, glue, right? Hindi mo naman i-record kung gano'ng karaming glue yung dinikit sa bawat sofa, sa bawat bed, at sa bawat cabinet. Right? So the idea behind it is rather than trace it directly, which is cumbersome and impractical, how we do it is we allocate it for each job. Okay? So in essence, direct materials are directly traceable. The same is true with direct labor. But for manufacturing overhead, this is usually allocated costs. Okay. Allocated meaning medyo may some level of arbitrariness, but we, we want to allocate it based on an allocation base that is most appropriate or which drives the total cost of manufacturing overhead. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So how do we then record uh, the costs of a job? In the olden days, okay, we record it in a paper called the job cost sheet. Okay? So if you look at this job cost sheet, what are the components? Number one, you identify the job number or the identifying, the identification of the job. And the item is also there, initiated, and what department is uh, doing the job. Okay? In the job cost sheet, there are columns for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead to determine the total cost of a job. Okay, so under direct materials, meron kang requisition number, meaning ilan yung kinuha. Parang this is a form. Okay, yung requisition number is a requisition form. Ano ibig sabihin ng requisition form? Ito yung form na ginagamit para kumuha ka ng um, so that you can uh, uh, get inventories from the warehouse. The warehouse will not release any material to you unless you tell them na I have a formal requisition, Here is, it's for this job, please release the materials to me. And once the requisition is released, then that is tagged to a specific job. Okay? So, yun yung documentation yan. So, kaya na the document yung direct materials kasi meron yung requisition form every time. Okay? Or a request form every time. Uh, next is direct labor. Okay? Yung direct labor naman, meron tayong kinatawag yung the olden days at the job tickets. Okay? So job tickets, essentially, yan yung record na yung empleyado which, to which job did he or she work. No? And once those tickets are issued, the number of hours are determined and therefore the total cost allocated or traceable to this job is now computed. Okay? For manufacturing overhead, we'll discuss it later. So with that, you're able to get the direct materials cost, direct labor overhead. You will have the cost summary here, and you now can determine the unit product costs. 
then from there you can price it properly because usually the pricing you know is cost plus assertive margin or mark so with there you can now get the proper selling price okay so now i'm saying that this is in the olden days because syempre, technology can can already uh, can already practice no? for example the use of barcodes okay the use of barcodes uh, eliminated the need for um, for physical pieces of paper for, for to, to withdraw inventory from the warehouse pending meron na lang barcodes and then each job has a barcode a wand that can that's assigned to it then binabarin na lang no? and so that it is automatically registered in a computer okay? so i mean this is the foundation of it but it's not necessarily the way that it is in the now of course it's modern na ngayon, but there are various ways to automate the um yeah so so that's the the way that it's going to be uh, implemented okay now the next slide shows us the different uh the different uh, documentation no? so if the gamut now materials for a specific job then there's a materials requisition form and the, the requisition form is required so that the inventory no, so the warehouse will release the inventory to you okay? because it's their documentation no? walang nawawalang inventory right without the materials requisition form then management can say no oh, why is your inventory so low is it lost so their documentation is no someone got it through the materials requisition form and next is that uh, employee time tickets naman are approvals by managers on to determine this employee no, uh, work on this job for a certain number of hours okay? and that gives us an idea of the direct labor that is supposed to be uh, allocated to this job okay now as you as materials are being requisitioned as, as job tickets are being issued that is recorded in the job in the job post sheets okay of course it does it there could be many requisitions okay there could be many direct labor so dito additional ano na lang yan uh, additional entries in your job cost sheet. But essentially, that's how a job posting system works. Okay. Now, what happens now to the manufacturing overhead? Okay. Because manufacturing overhead cannot be directly traced, so there are intermediate steps. No, for us to determine how much is the manufacturing overhead that is allocated to a specific uh, to a specific job like this one okay and we do that for us to do that we need to allocate the manufacturing overhead okay for us to allocate the manufacturing overhead there are two ways to do that number one is to choose an allocation base and number two is to determine the predetermined overhead rate. What's the allocation base? It is the driver that we will use to determine the manufacturing overhead that we will apply to a certain uh, job. Okay. So when you say the allocation base, that's the denominator that we use. And that denominator, as it is being used or as it is being incurred, would be used to as basis to allocate the allocate the manufacturing overhead costs. Okay. And once you have chosen the allocation base, you can now you can now compute the predetermined overhead rate. And the predetermined overhead rate is the rate that you will use so that you can allocate manufacturing overhead. To jobs. Okay, how exactly do we do this? Let's go to the next slides. So, why do you use an allocation base? 
So an allocation base is used so that we can assign manufacturing overhead to individual jobs. It's the proxy that we'll use to make, uh, to make manufacturing overhead easily traceable you know, to the different jobs. So an allocation base is used because number one, it is impossible or difficult to trace overhead, just like glue or nails or what else. The salaries of the supervisor, okay, those are costs that are obviously directed, uh, directly related to the jobs. But it's very difficult to say that you know, the supervisor uh, allocated this many hours for each one. Okay. So manufacturing overhead consists of many different items ranging from grease to production manager salary. So aside from it being difficult to trace, there are also so many items that fall within manufacturing overhead that it's impractical to get the allocation based for each one. Okay. Or it may be impractical to get the allocation based for each one. Okay. And then there are also many types of manufacturing overhead costs. Okay. And those types of costs may be fixed even though the fluctuates during the period. So an allocation base is required so that we can properly uh, well, assign it to the different jobs. Okay. The usual allocation base that's used is direct labor hours, direct labor dollars, or machine hours. That's the usual. Actually, usually, it's direct labor hours or machine hours. The idea being, if there are, if people are working on this project or you know, on this job for so long, invariably, they will also use a lot of the manufacturing overhead resources. Parang yun ang theory behind it. Okay. And that's the best way for us to, that's the most practical way for us to allocate uh, manufacturing overhead by just determining the effort that we use to, to make the job or to construct whatever the job is. So the, the, the determining, the determination of manufacturing head overhead uh, per product is called manufacturing overhead application. For us to do it, there has to be a predetermined overhead rate. Okay? So predetermined overhead rates rely on estimated data. Okay, so we have to estimate it first so that we can go on with production. Because siyempre, every month, um, the overhead, I mean, actual overhead is not finalized until end of the year, right? I mean, every month, may budget cap for that. And usually, we use those estimates you know, as the uh, basis for the pre determined overhead rate. Okay. So it relies on it because actual overhead is not known until the end of the period, as I mentioned. And second, actual overhead costs can fluctuate seasonally. No, thus can mislead decision makers. So pwedeng mataas siya in a certain month, pero will mellow down later on. So baka unnecessarily high yung pricing mo in certain months because you used, you, you were affected by the seasonality. So which may affect volume ultimately because of it's the pricey. So therefore, um, having a predetermined overhead rate sort of make sure that you're not affected by seasonality and decisions are made based on your expectations for the whole year. Okay? Now, how do you determine the predetermined overhead rate? The numerator is the total manufacturing overhead cost no, for the coming period. And the denominator is the estimated total units of the allocation base. So, ibig sabihin lang costs over allocation base. Both are estimates. Okay. So, parang ina-average out natin and we are assuming that it's variable. Right? I mean, that's the implied assumption here. Okay. How do you then compute it? No? So it is computed before the period begins and there are four steps to do it. Number one, of course, you have to estimate the total amount of the allocation base, which is the denominator. How will you do that? You will do that by determining your estimated production for the whole year. 
And for example, your predetermined overhead rate is direct labor hours. How do you estimate direct labor hours for the whole year? The first step is for you to determine how much is your production for the whole year. No. Kano karami mo ang gagawin mo for the whole year. And from there, you can estimate for every job how much is my budgeted or estimated direct labor hours. Okay? And then kung nakuha mo na yung number of job, you have already established your estimated uh, direct labor hours per job, then you can get the total direct labor hours for the year. The next step is for you to estimate the total fixed manufacturing overhead and the variable manufacturing overhead. Okay. In essence, these two bullet points actually. The essence of these bullet points is simply to estimate okay, total manufacturing overhead. That's the essence. And how do you do it? You estimate fixed costs. Okay and you estimate variable costs. Okay. Fixed cost, fixed yan. So in peso na yan or dollars. Variable cost per unit pa siya, right? Because that's the nature of variable cost. So for you to get the total variable cost, you need to get the total peso or total dollar that you use. That's why dumadaan ka sa intermediate step to get the equation to estimate the total number of manufacturing overhead. It's simply because you have to use the equation for you to estimate the total of this thing. So that equation is akin to the cost function that we define in cost behavior. So it's the same concept. And x here no, should be based on the allocation base. Okay? Whatever is the allocation base, that's the cost driver that we're assuming. So therefore, your cost function, y equals a plus b, x, should be uh, in line you know, with a cost driver that you defined, and that should be the allocation base. Okay. Here's an example. So the company estimates that it will require 160 direct labor hours. No, to meet the coming period's estimated production level. In addition, the company estimates the total manufacturing overhead is 200,000 and the variable manufacturing overhead cost is 275 per direct labor price. Now, from here, you can see that the cost function is what? Cost function is equal to 200,000 plus 2.75 times direct labor hours for the whole year. Okay, in this case, direct labor hours is 160,000. And so therefore, we compute based on that function. And that's what we do here. Okay, so the estimated total manufacturing overhead is 640,000. And that's the numerator. The denominator is 160,000. And that's the estimated direct labor hours for the whole year. Okay. So with that, you get the predetermined overhead allocation rate, okay, which is four dollars per direct labor price. So four, sorry, that's dollars. So that's four dollars per direct labor hour used by the job. Okay. Now, in our example, Kanina, how do we then update it? Okay. Based on our based on our direct labor column, eight hours was used okay. you know, to, to work on this job. Since this job used eight hours and our allocation base is based on hours. Then we carry it to the manufacturing overhead column. And the rate is based on the predetermined overhead rate. Okay. From there, therefore, the allocated amount of manufacturing overhead is 32. And from here, you can then 
Now determine okay, the total cost of this job is 236. Okay. Because two units were computed, you cannot divide this by two, and therefore per unit, your product cost is 118 dollars. 118 is simply 236 divided by two. Why divided by two? Because this job created two units of wooden cargo crate. And so just so you have an idea of the product cost. So that's how it works, okay? So another example, this job is an order to make three widgets. The order required 200 of direct materials and 10 direct labor hours at $15 per hour. The estimated project overhead for the year was 760,000 and the estimated direct labor hours were 20,000 for the whole year. What would be the total unit cost of the job? So the first step is for you to determine the predetermined overhead rate. Okay, and that's the estimated total overhead, 760 divided by estimated total direct labor hours for the year, which is 20,000. So the rate is $38 per hour, direct labor hour. From there, we can get the total cost or the unit product cost of the job. No? So direct materials, 200, based on this one. Direct labor is 150, that's 15 times 10. Okay. Manufacturing overhead is 380, that is 38 times 10 direct labor hours, which is the number or the effort or the allocation base used for this job. So therefore, the total cost of this job is 730 times. Now, for example, If the markup is 50%, you know, then you can determine the selling price. Okay, when you say markup, that is a percentage of cost. Okay, so for example, 50% markup means it is 730 plus 50% of 730, that would be the selling price, okay? So 750 plus, this is 375, tama ba? Yeah. So that, that is 10, sorry, hindi ako magaling mag-mental math. So the sum of 3750 plus 375, that's the total, that's the selling price that's appropriate for this chart, assuming a 50% markup. Okay. 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 okay, from a managerial perspective, why is job costing important to you as a manager? Okay, number one, if you are inaccurate in assigning manufacturing costs to jobs, it influences the planning and decisions made by managers. Okay, parang, uh, number one, of course, product will determine pricing. If the product costing is wrong, pricing is wrong. Okay, that's number one. Number two, okay, um, the problem is when job order costings fail to accurately allocate manufacturing overhead costs. Why? Because of wrong estimate of the manufacturing overhead numerator. Wrong estimate of the denominator, which is the total allocation basis, or wrong allocation base in the first place, because the allocation base is not reflective of how it is be how it drives total manufacturing cost. So you have to do that. You have to do the regression that we did in cost behavior, so that you can determine which allocation base actually is best. No, because if the regression fits perfectly or better no, with the higher R squared, for example, then that would signal that that's a better allocation base. Okay. So choosing an allocation base is one important um, aspect. And the idea is it's critical because the allocation base must drive the overhead costs. So there has to be studies to ensure 
studies or analysis such as regression to determine whether your allocation base drive overhead costs. Okay. The second problem with the allocation base is that usually there's a single predetermined plant-wide overhead rate okay, based on different labor hours. Uh, it is most practical to have a single plant-wide overhead rate, but it could be oversimplistic and incorrect, right? Uh, because probably it's just simply the reality that different costs, for example, or different departments may have different cost drivers. Okay. So therefore, one solution is for us to have multiple predetermined overhead limitation rates. For example, one job passes through two departments, milling and assembly. Okay. So there could be a different predetermined overhead in milling and a different predetermined overhead rate in assembly. Okay. So uh, that's what multiple predetermined overhead allocation rates are. So in this example, so machine hours is 60 direct labor hours. No? So is so, and the total fixed manufacturing overhead is 390 and 500, and the variable manufacturing overhead is 2 and 375. If we use a, uh, if we use multiple predetermined overhead allocation rates, wherein for milling, we use machine hours, okay, 60. For direct, uh, for assembly, we use direct labor hours, 80, then that Theoretically, could provide us with a more, uh, with a better way to determine the cost of a job. So, in this case, you know, for example, okay, uh, this should not have dollars. So, for example, for a job, for 07, you know, um, for the medium assembly, 800 hours is used for meaning department rather for assembly department p 70 direct labor hours are used okay and the, if the predetermined overhead rates are 70 and 280 the applied manufacturing overhead is 765 plus 200 okay so if you add direct materials direct labor to the applied manufacturing overhead then you are now able to determine the cost of this job. Basically, the same procedures, but there are just two rates. Okay? And in determining these overhead rates, generally you have to, to differentiate also the fixed costs. Okay? There, is, uh, there is manufacturing overhead for milling that needs to be allocated. And another manufacturing overhead for assembly that needs to be allocated. So that there's no double counting. So with this, if the markup is 75%, then this is the appropriate selling price based on the company's policy. Okay. So the application is the same. It's just that we are breaking up total manufacturing overhead into two departments. And for those two departments, you'll have a different allocation rates. Okay. Now for Financial accounting purposes, remember that manufacturing overhead that as we computed is called an applied overhead. Why is it called applied overhead? It's called applied overhead because it is based on estimates. You remember, right? The numerator is estimated total manufacturing overhead, right? And the denominator is based on estimated direct labor hours or whatever is the allocation base. Because they are based on estimates, pag natapos na yung taon, the, the actual manufacturing overhead will be different. At the end of the year, the actual total direct labor, hour, labor hours will be different. So obviously, the actual amount of overhead in a year Okay, will be different from the amounts that you applied in different jobs. Okay. So therefore, in financial accounting, you have to 
uh, dispose or we have to reconcile the two. Okay. So when a company applies less overhead to production than it actually incurs, so applied overhead is less than actual overhead for the year. It's called under applied overhead. Okay. Sabi yan, kulang. Kulang yung na-apply mo based sa actual. Okay. Now, if applied overhead is naman is greater than the actual overhead that you incurred at the end of the year, no, then it's called over-applied overhead. You allocated too much overhead to those jobs. That in total, it is now greater than what it should be once the year has ended. Okay. Now, that difference, how do you do that? Under, how do you reconcile that under financial accounting? Under financial accounting, the cost of goods sold reported on the company's income statement must be adjusted to reflect under-applied or over-applied overhead. Okay. If it's under-applied, it will increase the cost of goods sold. Kasi cool na nga eh. Right? The overhead that we allocated to different jobs is less than what it actually is. So that difference will have to be uh, also allocated to cost of goods sold. Okay. Pag, pag over applied naman, it means you expense too much. So therefore, you have to decrease cost of goods sold. So the, the total manufacturing overhead in all the jobs okay, will be equal to the actual overhead. So let's have an example here on the right side. So for example, at the start of the year, these were your assumptions. The budgeted manufacturing overhead was 200,000. The budgeted or estimated labor hours is 1,000. And therefore, your predetermined overhead rate is 200,000 divided by 1,000. So that's 200 per unit. Okay. Oh, sorry, per hour. Okay. For example, for the rest of the year, you had two jobs to work on. Each job used 300, 500, and 300 parts, and your predetermined overhead is 200 for each one. And therefore, MOH allocated to job one, MOH allocated to job two, and the third one is the MOH allocated to job three. In total, okay, you allocated 220,000 to all jobs. Okay? So, that's the total applied overhead. Okay. Under case one here, the actual manufacturing overhead at the end of the year turns out to be 200,000. Okay. And since applied is greater than actual to 20 versus 200, we call it an over applied overhead. If it's over applied overhead, you have to decrease cost of goods sold. How much is the decrease? That's the difference. So the effect is cost of goods sold decreases by 20,000, and therefore operating income should increase by 20,000 because an expense must be reduced. Case two, on the other hand, the actual overhead is 230,000. Okay, sales applied is less than actual, it means kulang, right? Therefore, you have to add on to cost of goods sold. Okay? How much is that? Sorry, mali yung amount. It should be 10,000. Okay? The difference between 220 and 230. Okay? And therefore, the impact on operating income is a reduction by 10,000. Okay? Well, that word, uh, what is the source of that number? That's a difference between applied and actual. Okay. So that's how it is to be accounted for in financial accounting. Why in cost of goods sold? Okay. It's close or it is uh, adapted in cost of goods sold because we assume that all of these jobs were finished and sold. Okay. And if they're also, then these amounts are already in cost of goods sold. Okay. And that's why, pagdating sa dulo, 
any over and under application is an adjustment to cost inflation. Okay. So that's how we account for it in financial accounting. Okay, so that's the end of this video on job costing. Uh, please read the book because it is it will further clarify or further explain some more concepts. Thank you.